Okay, so for round four, we have film and TV, and first up, there's Dave. Okay. During the physics show, we mentioned how Star Trek has predicted a few different new technologies long before they were invented, but I think there's another show that has been more accurate in its fortune telling, and that's The Simpsons. Now, when researching this, I found a few websites that show lists of weird Simpsons predictions. Some are a real stretch, like saying they predicted the Farmville game. Some might have been the inspiration for events to happen, like a lemon tree being stolen over in Houston, and some are just weirdly accurate. Of these Simpsons predictions that I think are a bit more accurate, we have mutant tomatoes caused by leaked radiation from a nuclear power plant. This happened in 2013 due to the Fukushima meltdown. It was predicted in 1999. Was that the Tamako episode? That yeah, was. Yeah. Tomato. Yeah. It was tomato mixed with tobacco. It was a really disgusting tasted tomato that was really addictive. Oh, so, I thought you were talking about in real life. No, 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 no. It was in the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, 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 Holy crap. <laughs> but the pictures of these mutant tomatoes are fucking ghastly. They're just yeah. horrendous. <laughs> yeah. It's like kill one. Revenge of the killer tomatoes. Yeah. Um, in 1994, they had a gag scene where the lunch lady is seen serving horse meat to the children. <laughs> oh, yes. We oh. all remember the horse meat scandal that happened again in 2013. And in 1995, they showed an episode based on the future where Lisa's fiance uses his watch as a phone. These weren't released until 2013. So the Simpsons were really good at prophesizing the year 2013. That's pretty cool. Back to the future, not so much. Oh, no, we got the hoverboard. We got the hoverboard. It wasn't a hoverboard. No, no, no. Have you not seen the more recent ones where it actually levitates quite far and goes... They've made improvements. Yeah, but it's still magnet-based. Is it pink? No, it's not. It's it's not the hoverboard. I'm I'm glad that that's your your qualm. Not how does it levitate, but what colour is it? (laughs) Essentially, yes. (laughs) Does it work on water? No, yeah, it's yes, a magnet. No, no, no. It we did work have over water. those boots. That was the thing. It worked over water. This, this was the clip That's, I was watching. It was the, the Back to the Future one doesn't work over water. That's the whole point. He oh. doesn't the work on water. They say I haven't the seen film. the film. You, I, you haven't. Se- <sighs> moving on. No, okay, moving okay, on before we say anything. Recap. Very quickly, you've never watched Little Mermaid and you've never watched Back to the Future. No, I, I, or I did, I'm sorry, sorry. I have watched Back to the Future two. At some point in my childhood, because I remember something about hoverboard crashing and something about going over a, a fountain or something along those lines, but they, I have no other memory of the film. I could I could well have seen it and then dreamed it or something, you know, because it's, it's <laughs> really it's disjointed it's memory. For what it's worth, we have his shoes. Self-tying shoes. Ah, uh, they oh, did, yeah, but yeah. no, they, 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 fine. Like me. Fine. Fine. And I mean, that DeLorean car's <laughs> that's pretty futuristic. <laughs> oh, come on. Made if out you, of spit and clean up. If you had a choice between a Ford Kia and a DeLorean, which one would you go for? <laughs> would it make the awesome sound that it makes in the film? Yes. But is it, it accelerates, it's great. Just, just fire tyre marks, that's all I want. Don't care. Anything else? As, uh, just, you just employ someone with petrol yeah. right behind you. <laughs> just just Has anyone played Rocket League? Yes, I own that. I, I spent so long. I yeah, and now you can, can get, get the DeLorean. DeLorean. And, when and you, it flies. And when you go at maximum speed, it, it the sparks flame come out in yeah. the front. And, but no, 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 yeah, there's, a, there's so a trick, because you can boost on that. So yeah. if you jump and boost at the right and angle, flies. then the wheels fold yeah, over and it flies. I may need to purchase that. Yeah, it's like 50p or something. I know. Stop being such a cheapskate. I know, I am. I'm kidding. Right, Max. Having called you that, you're next. Yeah. Max the cheapskate. Uh, for film and TV, my fact is The Thief and the Cobbler. You know, the Aladdin ripper. Originally conceived by Canadian animator and filmmaker Richard Williams, the mind behind the animation in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the film was conceived in 1964, but due to innumerable setbacks, misfortunes, and Williams's tyrannical perfectionism, the film's various cuts released worldwide between 1992 and 1995, taking 31 years total to be realised. It now holds the world record for longest active production for any film. The animation is beyond ambitious, employing Pink Floyd-esque acid trip style, in addition to the first known instance of 2D rendered 3D animation long before CGI became a reality. That's quite difficult to explain, but basically instead of having a computer-generated three-dimensional image, it was 
photorealistic cells in uh, normal animation would be 24 frames per second. These photorealistic cells are so many cells, just changing it microscopically so that when played back, it looks like a three dimensional image. Yeah. The film was panned by critics and was a flop due to two major issues. One, atrocious recutting by various studios that funded the project. And two, the fact that the plot, setting, and even the character designs were allegedly stolen by Disney due to a variety of animators leaving the team due to issues with Williams. Aladdin was released in 1992, long before the general release of the adulterated cuts of Cobbler in 92 to 95, leaving audiences with the impression of a badly made, badly cut knockoff of the beloved Disney film. So basically, it was a shit film. And um, no. If they, they've managed to get all the... Ne- well, not all the negatives. Basically, it never got released in its fully realised form. This man was working on this thing for 31 years. Yeah. It was his magnum opus. And if you, if you go on YouTube and see the animation style, it really is something quite special. But they got Matthew Broderick in for one of the recuts to do the voices. Um, and basically, these characters that were made, um, the, the vizier looks exactly like Jafar, the um, Sultan looks exactly like the Sultan from Disney. And these characters were conceived, created and drawn long before Disney would have even begun to start creating Aladdin. Yeah. They were stolen wholesale, but there's just no proof. And yeah, well, if you see... Of this, obviously. Well, short of my... <laughs> short yeah. of this podcast. We're literally calling you out, Disney. We're not. Please no. don't sue us. <laughs> if you look at the animation in the film, it really is something quite special. It's just the fact that they, they put in stupid song stupid musical numbers that were never meant to be there that people hated they cut it so that the plot was almost completely abstract compared to what it was originally conceived as mm. there's a there's a rehashed um, rehashed fan cut where they've managed to collect all of the negatives and stuff like that it's not still complete as Williams wanted it to be done but he says himself in an interview in the 80s or maybe even the late 70s that this he wanted to create his masterpiece mm. and because he was such a perfectionist no one would work with him and no one would fund him. And he was getting sued for not delivering work on time and it was just a complete cluster, basically. Wow. But everyone who went to see it at the time in 1992 said, oh, that's a bit of a crappy Aladdin ripoff," and panned it. During your research, did you find it was one of the Aladdin I'm talking about? They made a massive change of direction. Instead of going for highly focalised sort of images of how humans are meant to look, they basic, based the characters on basic shapes. I didn't, but that's a fun fact about Aladdin. They are quite angular people. Mm. Now, if you think about it, so the Sultan was basically a circle. Yeah, he was. Jafar was kind of a candlestick. The magic rug was a trapeze. Strangely. And I'm trying to remember the last two, and they're just not... The, the, the genie is a tear. The genie is a tear. Yeah. Yeah. Tear drum. Um... He's sad. Oh, well, Jasmine must be hourglass because she was very thin waisted. Yeah, I think that's one. And oh, I can't head. quite remember the one for actually Aladdin, but it's this whole basis that they went from. So you look at things like Sleeping Beauty, which is around the same time that they sort of man- manufactured, animated, mm. and you've got very sort of highly stylized, this is what people look like, and all the rest of it. And then they went, nah, basic shapes. Yeah. yeah, and it worked. Yeah, I was going to say Down they did very them. well. They did very well. I like that. Right. I've but seen that one. Yeah, Thief, Thief and the Cobbler has now become a sort of cult classic, and it was when it was restored, it was given you know awards and things for that. Well, when they saw the actual proper cut of it, they started mm. to realise that it was Panem, something pretty good. Award. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, Laura, you're up. Okay, so I thought I'd go a bit classic with TV and talk about Wiley Coyote from Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Wiley Coyote. Uh, originally conceived of as just the Coyote, the animator decided to base it more on Mark Twain's Roughing It, in which Twain described the Coyote as a long, slim, slick, and sorry looking skeleton that is a le- living, breathing allegory of want. He is always hungry. Mm-hmm. In the cartoons, there is never anything that references what his middle name is. E just is E, much like Harry S. Truman. However, there is one comic from 1975 where it is found that the wild E. Coyote is standing for Ethelbert. Random. I liked it. I see. Will 
And all that coyote. Yeah. William Ethelbert. Hmm. Esquire. There's quite, some quite interesting rules, because they were quite strict with the Wily e. Coyote cartoons. They had some very specific rules that they had to follow whenever they were creating. Cause that, they did some astounding number of these cartoons, like 200 mm. odd, dearly. Um, but they had very specific rules. So if something was falling, and an anvil or a rock was falling, then the item that was not the rock had to be falling faster, despite the fact that's not physically possible. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So that whatever landed would get hit by the rock or the anvil or whatever, um, and the coyote always had to be undone by his own yeah. misfortune yeah. or action. He, his he, own he was the man. one. Yeah, he was being made to look a fool by himself, not, not necess- roadrunner. Yeah, the roadrunner never really did anything apart mm-hmm. from run and kind of not do what the. Like the, like the total reverse of Tom and Jerry, where Tom would... Sorry, am I intruding on your... No, please continue. I just have a fact to follow up. Uh, okay. 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 So, like the reverse of um, Tom and Jerry, where Tom would hatch these crazy schemes, which would just be undone by Jerry just walking out and going, Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just going to cut the string I'm, or yeah, something. I'm just going to cut, cut this ring him, and walk away. Hitting him with a frying pan, yeah. making his face all flat. Yeah, exactly. You know, like mice do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. We've all seen it. During part of my research, I found that when Tom and Jerry was originally conceived, that's not the, what their original names were. Yeah, what was it? I've, I've read that as well. I, Jeff I and Sparky it. or something like that. No, I don't know what it was. Was Thomas just more amusing for a black woman to scream? I was going to say, yeah, there was a big racial stereotype yeah, there. Oh, the yeah. Black yeah. Ones. I, I, I thought you were just being generally no. racist. No, no, I'm not. No. I'm not racist. I suddenly you just, just have that, that, I suddenly but, remember that his owner was a. But that was uh, a uh, huge, yeah, black racist black mm. thing yeah. back then. With a well, she changed to a white one later on. The the the, the broom. The yeah, broom the one. was the one that I I always yeah. see her whacking him up the ass with it. It was a different time. So Tom's name was originally Jasper. And Jerry's name was originally Jinx. Jasper and Jinx. Jinx. I can yeah, the alliteration kind of set it apart a bit. Wasn't it, it, Jinx, wasn't it changed Jinx. in reference to the war, though? World War One, Tom and Jerry? No, Jerry's... Or is that a that, 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 that Expand on that. Cause... But the Jerry's were the Germans, and the Jerry was the one who always won. So Yeah, that would make sense. It was Nazi propaganda. <laughs> We've finally gotten to the bottom of it. Well, not no. Wasn't Tom and Jerry from the like before the nineteen? Wait, who animated it? Before Disney. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, not, right. I'm saying nothing about Walt Disney. <laughs> I'm saying nothing about Walt Disney. Please don't sue me from beyond the grave. You I crazy am. frozen anti-Semite <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Do you mean anti-Semitic as well? I thought it was me that was anti- made. D- d- Someone is anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah. They d- are. Doesn't that clean up cuts? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you, you crazy, crazy anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic bastard. bastard. <laughs> uh, Anywho, yeah, let's wrap this one up. So, round four, film and TV. Are we going to go with Dave's fortune-telling Simpsons, Max's Aladdin ripoff, or Laura's William Ethelbert Coyote? Max, who are you going to go with? I am. Actually, going... no. Let's go with Laura. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't want to be showing favouritism here but Dave totally showing favouritism I, I know but I'm, I'm playing to the audience cool Max who are you going with I am going to go with Dave as well just because I'm the guy that thought tomacos were real things <laughs> <laughs> so that whoever I choose it's a lesser point <laughs> it doesn't really mean the same as other people I'm going to go for yours what are you stealing yeah you know I'd like uh, them to catch up. I like Wiley Coyote, so I'm going with Wiley Coyote. Hey, uh, unfortunately, you. rather impotently, but uh, that's some part of my life. Dave, congratulations on winning round four. Yay. 